Am I the a-hole for not giving away the money my grandfather left for me to my cousin? My grandfather was a great man, and someone I still look up to, even after he passed away. He was one of the nicest and more gentle persons I've known through my life. Throughout my childhood and adolescence, I had a very close relationship with him. Growing up, I would rather spend time with him than in my own house. Due to that, I developed quite a deep connection with him. He was a doctor, and I was constantly exposed to his work as he would often tell, softened up, stories about his daily routine and how he would want to help out the sick. Honestly, that close contact with him left quite a mark on me, and at an early age, I decided that I also wanted to be a doctor. I would constantly tell him about that, and in my teen years, he would constantly help me out with my studies so I could achieve that. Sadly, before I could even get into college, my grandfather passed away. I was devastated, and I went through a lot after his passing. I mentioned my grandfather was a great man, and he valued education a lot. Before his passing, he wrote a will, I'm not sure if this is the exact term, leaving a lot of money to his grandkids, and I have a few cousins. Enough to pay for college tuitions, and some more. I didn't really care about the money, rather I would prefer to have my grandpa with me. But that's not possible. He, however, always believed in me and left me enough for me to pay for my education, all the way through medical school. It still brings tears to my eyes that he thought so far ahead. Well, I decided that would do my best to become the person he knew I could be. I studied as much as I could and got into an amazing college. Now I'm one semester away from graduation, top of my class. Medical school's applications are already closed, and I'm starting to prepare myself as it isn't as simple as that. Regardless, yesterday my aunt came to visit me and my parents. I'm currently with them due to college being temporarily online. She came and talked with us about a lot of things. Her daughter, my cousin, is a good person, but she hasn't found out what she wants to do yet. She jumped colleges more times than I can remember, and that costs money. She came to us to ask us if we could give her daughter part of what my grandpa left me. She says that since I'm already graduating from college, I don't need it as much as her daughter. Now, I do feel sorry for her, but giving away this money means I won't be able to attend medical school. Student loans aren't a thing in my country, at least not ones that can cover med school, and my parents can't afford it themselves. I explained to her that I couldn't do that and the reason for it. However, this didn't sit well with my aunt at all. She got upset and started to argue that I was being an egotistical a-hole. Things did escalate and she left. My parents told me it was my choice, but I'm feeling like an awful person. So, Reddit, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not a a-hole. Your cousin had a certain amount of money and made bad decisions about her education. You shouldn't have to pay for it, and you definitely shouldn't have to sacrifice your dreams to pay for it. I've gotten the impression that your family and possibly your culture really values family taking care of family. Look at it this way. 1. Your aunt doesn't care at all about you, as her family, or she wouldn't be asking you to sacrifice your future. 2. Your life path deeply honors your grandfather's values and how he chose to distribute his money. Your aunt is disrespecting your grandfather's legacy by asking you to give up your inheritance and career. 3. You would actually be hurting your cousin by giving her money. She needs to learn that actions have consequences. Well said, mate. I do wonder, though. You think the aunt went hat in hand on her own accord, or did a cousin ask slash beg slash pastor her to go? I would guess the aunt has been pushing the cousin to study, and the cousin keeps flunking and switching because she isn't suited or isn't ready for college or those courses. Not today, Hull. Your cousin already went through the money left for her. It's not fair for you to jeopardize your future due to her poor choices. Not today, Hull. Her daughter's inability to settle on a major or specific course of study is not your problem. You should not give up your dream of med school for this cousin. Your aunt can either figure out a way to help your cousin or your cousin can get a job and go to school like many people do. Not they, Hull. Your grandpa believes in you and loves you. He wanted you to have the money to get into medical school. Your cousin should not be rewarded for her behavior and your aunt doesn't care. I say keep the money and achieve the dream you have worked so hard for. Next story is titled... Am I the a-hole for telling my sister she chose the struggle life? 
My 27 male sister Amy, 30 female, is a social worker with a master's in social work that came with over six figures of debts between undergrad and grad school. I work in tech sales, have a bachelor's, but no grad school. I've made about 150,000 the last 12 months on a 60,000 base plus commission pay package. She just revealed to me that she makes 50,000. Sunday while at our mom's for Mother's Day, she was complaining about how underpaid she is and how it's unfair that she struggles with bills so much. She asked me multiple times what I made and I wouldn't tell her. But she asked if it's six figures and I said yes. She then asked if I could help her with childcare bills since I make at least double what she does and have no kids or major expenses. She also implied I'm overpaid since my job doesn't benefit society like hers. I told her I'm not comfortable with that because mixing family and money is never a good idea. Then she called me greedy and started getting into a moral debate about how society pays the wrong people and how she should never have to struggle and ask if I thought it was fair. I answered, fair pay is getting paid what's agreed to and she knew what she was getting into when she got into social work. To which she goes, oh, you think I chose the struggle life? To which I said, well, you chose that degree and career, so if that's what comes with it, yes. Then she got super pissed and still won't let it go. She brought it up again last night when we had dinner at my parents again. Am I the a-hole here? Everyone sucks here. She shouldn't have expected you to help her financially. You shouldn't have been a prick about it. Yes, she chose that career knowing what it pays, but that doesn't mean she deserves to struggle financially. She probably has her reasons for choosing that career. Maybe they outweighed the salary at the time she chose it. The reality is, there are structural differences in how someone in tech makes much more than someone in social work. I'm sure both of your jobs benefit society in different ways. Not one is better than the other. The structures in place allow for someone in tech to be more likely to be paid more than someone in social work, or someone in education, or someone in government work, etc., etc. The comparison goes on. Fair pay is getting paid what's agreed to is kind of a cop-out, a hollish answer. People agree to unfair wages all the time, out of need or circumstance. Agreeing to be paid a certain amount, in itself, doesn't make it fair. I mean, she knew what the degree costs, she knew what the field paid. Which is why, when she asked if I thought she chose the struggle life, I figured that's an obvious yes. I have no opinion in what social workers should be paid, but if you know what it is and choose to enter that field, you choose what comes with it. In hindsight, maybe I should have just stroked her ego and said, yeah, she deserves more, but I was just answering her question. Not day haul. She did all but straight up tell you she doesn't respect you or your line of work, lol. Yeah, that's kinda how I took it too. Out of nowhere. Definitely jealous that I make more without a grad degree, but felt uncalled for. The not lending her money is not the a-hole, sure. But the fact that such an important job as she does is so grossly underpaid. Your title asks if you're the a-hole for what you said. To that, yes, you're the a-hole. Yes, it shows it. But your response showed a lack of compassion and a gross complacency with a broken social system that we live in. A complacency and wager that comes from never having to struggle yourself. Never being in a bad situation out of control that forces you to need the services her line of work provides, so you have some perspective on its value. I'd say her career is more important to society than yours. You're assuming, incorrectly, a lot about my life. I made 30000 in my first sales job and worked my way up. Have a lot of other life experiences you don't know about, too. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hall for not giving my cousin my coloring books? I, 22 female, have a very large collection of those super intricate coloring books. I find them very relaxing. I also have a little cousin, 4 female, who loves to color. Whenever she comes over, I give her some children's coloring books I keep on hand. But last week on her most recent visit, she insisted on coloring in one of mine. I don't actually color in my books. I print off copies of the page I want to do so I can color the picture again in the future. So I told my cousin she couldn't color in the book, but I could get her some pages. I printed off a few pages from the book I was working in, and she colored the same pictures I did. I thought it was all fine, until she went to show her mom. My aunt had a total meltdown. She came to me and asked why I didn't just give the book to her kid. She knows I have a ton. 
She called me a selfish, greedy monster, which I thought was a massive escalation compared to the issue. I tried to explain my side of it, but she kept yelling over me before grabbing my coloring book and ripping the pages out of it. She told me I had better think about my actions and be prepared to make it up to her and cousin the next time they come over. I've gotten messages from a few family members telling me it's stupid for a 22-year-old to have coloring books and I should just give them to a kid that will appreciate them. I don't know. I think I may be the a-hole because it really was just a cheap coloring book I got at Walmart. It wouldn't have hurt anything to just let cousin have the book to color in. So Reddit, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Of course you're not the a-hole. You didn't deny your cousin anything and she wasn't upset. Your aunt sounds insanely entitled. Not entitled. The aunt sounds straight up unhinged. Who the hell rips out pages of someone else's book because their child didn't get to color in it? That's just weirdly over the top aggressive. I wouldn't let the crazy page ripper back in my home till they'd apologized and maybe replace the book they destroyed to be honest. Or at least paid for a replacement. She destroyed Obi's property for goodness sake. Not day hall. Not day hall. The kid wanted to color and they got to. And even if they hadn't, it's your stuff. I'm a parent and my son isn't entitled to other people's stuff just because we're family. Your aunt sounds awful. And I bet every family member taking her side is saying it because they don't want her getting at them over it. Edit. As for, she told me I had better think about my actions and be prepared to make it up to her and cousin the next time they come over. I'd be telling her she'd better not show her face until she has apologized. Don't let her entertain the idea that she's the one waiting for an apology. Yes, God, that aunt made me so angry. Her child was happy, wasn't it? And then she, an adult woman, comes along and destroys her property? The hell? I would ignore the hell out of her until she apologizes for what she did. Not day home. You were never too old for coloring books, and you were perfectly nice to your cousin, who apparently was happy without getting to color in the book. What the hell? The kid colored and had a good time. What is the aunt's problem that she thinks it's okay to use her kid as a motivator for her to have a drama fit? Not a day hall. Now for the last story. Am I the a hall for no longer inviting my broke friend on nights out? For context, I have a friend that went out of work on surgery leave back in October. This was supposed to be a relatively simple surgery with a return to work date scheduled for two weeks following the surgery. She ended up out of work for seven months on leave, collecting disability. The timing of her being out of work ended up being during the winter when there were limited options of things to do. The friend group generally meets once a week for dinner, drinks, and we enjoy local music. It's not a set meetup. It varies every week depending on what day has live music, where, folks work schedules, etc. At the beginning, I was happy to pick up my friend that had fallen in hard times share of the check and had gladly offered to. I think at some point it had become assumed that I would pick up every single time. The friend would do odd things when the check came, like fake a phone call, go spend an awful long time in the bathroom, etc. I would pick up the check every time. She even at some point stopped saying thank you or acknowledging the bill at all. It got to the point where I didn't want to be spending that much on nights out. And the weather broke, so there were more opportunities to do other things together. This friend's been invited over my house for cooking in, for playing music together, we're both musicians, various outdoor activities, and has not taken me up on any of those invitations. My meetups for nights out with the remainder of the friend group has continued. However, I've stopped making the one broke friend aware of when we're meeting, as nobody wants to continue picking up an extra weekly bill after eight months. She's upset the rest of us are spending time together without her. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole, but you gotta tell her directly that she is taking advantage of all of you. She has been taking you for chumps within those eight months. At no point did anyone tell her that I am unable to cover you anymore. You will have to pay for yourself when you come to these invites. She's intentionally being a mooch. She gets up to the bathroom when the checks arrive, and worse is she no longer shows gratitude. Probably doesn't want to bring attention that you've been paying for her. She is using your silence and compliance to continue to get free meals while you all continue with your non-confrontational front. Not day home. 
Your friend knows exactly why she's no longer invited out. How does she know? Because she disappeared every time that it was time to pay the bill. A friend wants to spend time with the group. What is stopping her from inviting people over for a potluck, a picnic in the park, etc.? It's pretty obvious that friend values paid for food rather than making the effort to pay for her meals or create an opportunity to share a meal with a friend group. I invited her over for dinner at my house, to play music together, and to do a few things outdoors that would have been free. She didn't take me up on any of those invites. That's why I think you are not an a-hole. Your friend is a mooch and resents the fact that no one wants to continue to pay for her mooching. Not an a-hole, but why not just be honest and direct? I can't find a way to do it without it being super awkward slash embarrassing. Hey, we would love to have you join us, but no more of that fake phone call at bill time stuff. It just sounds so cringe-worthy for conversation to have. Not today, Hull, but try finding things she can afford to do. Either that or continue to exclude her. Either way, it solves the issue. She was invited to participate in numerous things that would have been free to everyone, but didn't take me up on any of those invitations.